Hey guys, Django here and welcome to episode two of this Ars Nouveau getting started guide. In this episode, we're going to look at source. We did a little bit last time, but we're going to go through a bunch of ways to get source, which is very important for this pack. We need source to do just about everything from imbuing to enchanting to rituals. So stick around. So in the last episode, we did generate source. We've got an agronomic source link here, a source jar filling up. And in order to get this thing to work, we just need crops to grow. And crops have to be actively growing for that to work. So if we break a bunch, get all this stuff growing again, as much as we can, now you can, you can see that source is getting generated with every grow tick that happens. It's not very much. We're at 76 before, we're at 77% now. Yeah, that one growth didn't even bring us up a percentage. So that's going to take a long time. It's also pretty tedious harvesting all those plants. Now we're just doing Ars Nouveau here. If you want to pair this with a create farm that's constantly harvesting, that, that would work really great. I've never done it, but I'm sure it would. What we're going to do is head off to find some source berries. There's a great Ars only way to generate source continually by growing source berries and pairing them with a starbuncle. So we're going to head off to find them. We've got the things we need to capture a starbuckle if we find them. Let's make another dowsing rod. Okay, so we need some gold and we need some archwood. And it was this. No. Way around. Let's make a couple of these. So we've got three to work with. Well, our almost dead one and a couple more. And we're going to head over to that archwood forest. It's over in this direction. Two things we want to find, source berries. The book says they're best found in taiga biomes, I guess where you'd find sweet berries. You can find them pretty much anywhere in my experience, anywhere with like trees and forest. I have seen them in an archwood forest. I do believe though that there's a better chance to find the magical creatures like the starbuncle, whirly sprig, and drigme in archwood. And ideally we'll find a starbuncle in here. You can find these creatures everywhere. Again, just I think I mentioned in the first episode, it's best to just carry the things around to capture them because you're just going to see them around and want to take the opportunity to get them. I'll be right back when I find something. Okay, so you can see over here, I used my dowsing rod and I found, I think that's a starbuckle based on its shape. Oh, there's a couple of them. Yeah, two starbuckles. This is great news. So here's what we do. We grab old nuggets. Just throw it on the ground near it. Should come back and grab it. And it turns into Starbuncle shards. Where was that other guy? What is he up in a tree? Might need a little help. Just running along the treetops. All right, so you just have to go to the treetops to meet him. Where is he? Here we go. Come back. grabbed it. I've never seen starbuckles up in the trees. Okay, we've got two starbuckle shards. Now we're going to use these to make starbuckle charms. We just use the enchanting apparatus for that. And now we just need to find some horseberry bushes. Again, you're more likely to see them when you're just out running around. So just grab it, grab some when you can. They grow just like source berries. So all you really need is one. We've been running around quite a bit. And so far, nothing. Feeling kind of unlucky. There is a ruined nether portal. It's been looted. However, there's a gold block here. We'll take that. There's our two starbuckles right there. And here they are. All right, so we just... Now these hurt if you hit them, just like sweet berries. If we right click, we can harvest it. Maybe I'll leave these here for somebody else. And we can plant them just like sweet berries. All right, let's head back home. On my way back, I'm gonna use one of these dowsing rods and see if I can find any other features along the way. Okay, up ahead, I think that is a drigme. For a drigme, we need a wilding horn, which we have a wild end horn. We just throw it at him the same as the starbuckle. Does a little dance and boom, two drigme shards. That is amazing. Look at this up ahead. Got some more creatures here. I only have one more wilden horn. I'll use it on these drigmes and two more drigmes shards. Three starbuckles, four drigmes, 
It's just a whirly sprig that I haven't got. Okay, we're on our way back and I just spotted another one. And this is home right over here. All right, here we are back home again. Let's put some of these things away. We'll do a Drigme setup maybe in a future episode. We're just gonna focus on Thoris and the Starbuncles in this one. Okay, so let's plant Berry Patch over here. Now those will grow. They might reach that agronomic source link. It's, it looks like they are. So let's make a Starbuncle now. Now to make the Starbuncle shard, we put some gold into an enchanting apparatus. Need four. It's shapeless, so it doesn't matter what position you put those things in. And we just hit the middle with a Starbuncle shard. Right click on the center. We get a Starbuncle. We need a wand, a Dominion wand. Just source gems, stick in the middle. We need the Dominion wand to kind of program the Starbuncles. And here's our Dominion wand. We need a barrel or something, chests. All right, so let's put these over here. We right click with the Starbuncle charm to make the Starbuncle. Now he'll automatically pick berries. I don't think he'll automatically put them in a chest though. So let's see, he should go off and get that berry. Maybe he won't if he doesn't have a place to put them. So if I hover over him, it says he's storing items at zero locations and taking items from zero locations. So if we right shift right click with the wand on a chest first, and then him, he will take things out of the chest. And if we click on him first with just a right click, shift right click resets him. So if we just right click on him, and then shift right click on the chest second. Now it says storing items in one location. Now that he's got a place to put them, he's going to pick the berries them in the chest and he'll just do that forever and this has the effect of harvesting these plants and they're going to grow and as they grow they're going to feed the source link so there's our very easy way to harvest stuff with with a star bunkle it'll keep those crops growing and we don't have to do any harvesting ourselves all right so that's great that's one way to get source automatically. Well, the second way, first way is harvesting those crops ourselves. The second way is the Starbuncle harvesting those. Now let's look at the mycelial source link. The mycelial source link we make with in a crafting grid with these things. We need a couple source gems and a mushroom stew. A mycelial source link. Now to feed the mycelial source link, what it does is it eats food and turns it into source. If we we just need to give it food. We do that with a pedestal. And pedestals require source stone. The recipe for that is any stone around a source gem. Got an arcane pedestal. And we just need to uh, feed it with a hopper. We can tell the Starbuncle to put stuff straight into the pedestal. That'll slow him down if he has to wait for the pedestal. Use that to feed the pedestal. Okay, so we'll do this over here. Something that I think is a good idea is to kind of spread things out. You're gonna probably tend to crowd the source generation together with the source consumption so that they can all feed off the same source link with source jar. But source jars are so cheap um, and we have relays. We can send source around. They don't reach very far. So we'll use some source relays and send source around our base. We'll do that at the end of the video. All right, so we need the mycelial source link. We'll burp this down right here. Pedestal next to it, move the chest. We need to put a hopper facing. I'm gonna need you to move. Oh, you picked up my, put it in there. Thank you. We're gonna need to reset him, but okay. So hopper. And we'll just do one chest up here to keep it keep it neat. All right, we need to reset him because we moved his chest and he just stopped working. You see that? It's gonna be tough to get to in here. So we shift right click, we clear him. 
a click on him, right click on him, and then a shift right click on the chest. He's gonna to start to put stuff in it, and the berries are gonna come on here, and the mycelial source link is eating them. I'm not sure that that can reach all the way over there, so we're gonna get another source jar for that. So source jars are made with glass and archwood, archwood slabs, actually. Make a couple of these. And we'll make another agronomic source link. While we're at it, let's grab the ingredients for the next the ingredients for the next source generator, which is a cactus farm. So let's put a source jar down right here. Oh, and a side effect of the mycelial source link is it creates mycelium around it and grows mushrooms. That's pretty neat. And you can see we're filling this up pretty quickly. The combination now of these things. We'll put a source link right here. Okay, and now we'll make a, a vanilla cactus farm. We've got a whole bunch of cactus here. And what we need to do is put a bunch of planks in between them. this up later. Let's just get this running. If we put signs up here like this. And now we put cactus on the sand blocks. Now those cactus are going to grow. Cactus, if they hit a block that's next to them, they break. And that sign counts. And these signs are a great way to do this because it causes the cactus to drop to the ground instead of to itself, and you can start to collect the cactus as well. And we can use starbuckles for that. I could have made that one higher, and I'll do that. I'll fix that later and make it make those one taller so that the cactus grow three high. That'll do a couple things. Um, apparently with cactus, each cactus in the stack generates a grow tick when it grows up on top. So we get more grow ticks coming from those. We should start to see source coming from these cactus growing. And they're just gonna break right away. Yep, there's, here it comes. And they're gonna keep breaking and keep growing. So this is gonna generate a good amount of source. Just a vanilla cactus farm. Okay, the last source generator I wanna show you is the volcanic source link. That is made with a bucket of lava, gem, and Gold. We have a lava bucket right here. We need stone to surround it with. So let's grab some stone. We'll do this right over here. We want to do a three by three block of stone. And we put a volcanic source link right in the middle of it. We need some stuff to burn. Any fuel source, it's these logs. Throw them down next to, it eats it and sends the source into the, into the jar. Blazing archwood logs apparently burn more. You can see the starbuncle picking up the saplings I dropped. Those are gonna get thrown, put in here. I don't know if it can eat those. Kind of like a composter. Let's see if it will eat the saplings. I don't think it will. After we finish up with the, the volcanic source link, we'll talk about how to address how to address that problem. Okay, so we need another hopper, another pedestal. How to make that? We need another chest. Okay, so the same way we put down a pedestal, we put down a hopper going into it, chest on top. Now we can fill this thing with any fuel source that we want. We can put these blazing archwoods logs in here. It'll just continually feed off of those. 
As far as wood goes, blazing archwood logs are apparently better fuel than regular logs, but it depends on, you know, the kind of smelting strength of the fuel. So coal and charcoal will work much, much better. So we're better off cooking these logs into charcoal and then putting them in here. And now you can see while when this thing is working, it heats up the stone around it and turns it into magma, and then it's gonna turn it into lava, which I should surround this thing with more stone because we're gonna have lava flowing everywhere. Another source jar down because we're generating all kinds of source right now. All right, there you have it. Regular crops, starbuncle with source berries, double dipping by putting the source berries through the mycelial source link. Cactus growing constantly, thanks to that vanilla cactus farm and volcanic source link. See it turned into lava now. The last step is gonna create a lava lily on top. Let's fix our problem where the starbuncle is putting the wrong things in that chest. Okay, so now to tell the starbuncle that it can only put source berry inside that chest, we need a picture frame. This is a mechanic that's used by a number of different mods, like Alex's mods, mobs. You can put an item frame on a chest and crows will only put the item that's in the frame in the chest. That's one way to do that. Another way to do that is with, with these scrolls. There's an allow scroll, an eye scroll, and a mimic scroll. And we can fill these things up with items to allow by putting them on the scribe table, putting a list of items. So we can you can only put one frame on a chest with one item in it, or you can put in a item scroll on. So if we make an allow scroll, blank parchment, age bloom fibers, blank parchment, pair it with a chest, and we get an allow scroll. Okay, so we can put this allow item scroll on here, and then we shift right click whatever we want on it. We take it back off again. If we look at it in our inventory, says it has sourceberry in the list and we can add more things to it. For example, we wanted it to collect, say, stone. We shift right click that, pick it up. Now it's got stone on it. You can clear it by just putting it in the crafting grid. And do it again, just for sourceberries. There we go. And now we can put this in the item frame It does the same thing. The difference being that it will only collect source berry. Good boy. Okay, the last thing I said I would show you is relays. We'll do a really simple relay example. Relays, there's lots of different kinds. There's the basic one though, which is a source gem block, which is made with four source gems. We need two relays at least. Actually, we don't, we only need one. But we'll just do one. They can be chained together. And we need another jar. Now we can keep source somewhere else, like some central location if we want. And a relay will reach, I think, 30 blocks, whereas the source links only go, I think they go nine blocks. So if we go way over here, put this source jar down, and we put this relay right here, somewhere in between them. And it's same as the starbuncle. So I click on this, right click on the source jar, and then right click on the relay. It's taking from location like that. Man, I'm moving around. And now we cl right click on this. Well, you can see when you right click on something, it glows what it's already connected to. And I'll come way over here and right click on this. And now it's sending all our mana across our base and filling up this jar. So with this method, we can create source batteries basically and have a place where all our source jars are, send all our source from our sources into the jar, and then we can pull the source from the jar to go to other places. And here's all the different relays. They tend to get expensive. The source relay is what we looked at. Then there's a splitter, which requires nether quartz and lapis. If, if we had a splitter in the middle there, instead of that relay, we could send a warper, sends it long distances, which we need to get to the end for that because it has hot chorus fruit. 
and then a collector and a depositor. So a collector, if it's next to multiple sources of source, without being linked to them, it will, if they're five blocks away, it'll pull it all in. And then you can relay it over to a depositor. And if you have the depositor next to a bunch of unlinked jars that are five blocks away, that's a way of getting a source from a bunch of places, sending it, and then distributing it into a bunch of jars that are right next to the depositor. We'll work on those in a later episode when we're expanding on our source battery. Okay, I think that's gonna do it for this episode. Gotta watch that creeper back there. We've learned about three different kinds of source generation, agronomic, volcanic, and mycelial. There's like three others. You can get it from water, um, breeding animals, and I think there's another one. I think there's a total of six. Really easy to make, really easy to generate a good amount of source with a little bit of automation. All right, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel to keep up with this series and future ones, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I appreciate you.